Hey everyone, it's Josh here. In today's software showdown, we're going to be taking a look at two behemoth AI chatbots, Microsoft Copilot and Anthropic Claude. Now, in a previous video I did comparing two other chatbots, a lot of you commented that my results were a little bit biased. And I realized, of course my results are going to be biased because my results are going to be based on which one I like more. So in this video, we're going to be taking a little bit different of an approach. We're going to be allowing you, the viewer, to decide which one you think is better based on how the challenges go. We're going to be giving them the same prompt and seeing which one we like more. Now, we're going to see in your eyes, which one is better. With that being said, let's get right into our showdown of Copilot versus Claude. Now, before we get into this epic showdown, I do want to give a quick shout out to our AI newsletter, Neural Frontier. Neural Frontier is a newsletter that we do weekly that talks about all the latest AI news, topics, tools, everything you need to know to stay updated in 2024 and beyond with everything tech and everything AI. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. With that being said, let's get into the showdown. All right, so here we are. On the left, I have Microsoft Copilot, and on the right, I have Anthropics Claude, and we're gonna put in the exact same prompt. We're gonna be ideally looking for the result that, again, you think is the best. Starting off with short stories, moving onto things like code, reasoning, image recognition, and much, much more. And we're gonna see which one of these in your eyes is supreme. All right, our first prompt here, create a 500 word blog post on the use of automation tools for software developers. Now again, we're not gonna be really looking for the speed here. We're just gonna be looking at the responses. What exactly do they give? All right, let's take a look at Copilot first and see what it did. Okay, so Copilot says the benefits of using automation tools for software developers in a fast paced world of software development increased efficiency, enhanced accuracy and consistency, improved collaboration, faster time to market, cost savings, scalability, all the things that you would expect to see with a solid intro, middle, and conclusion. And it also actually highlights the sources in which it got all the information from. So pretty good. With that being said, let's take a look at what Claude did and see if it performed any better. Okay, so Claude actually gave us the 500 word blog post as requested. And as we can see here, it says, streamlining development, the power of automation tools for software developers. In the fast-paced world of software development, do they both say in the fast-paced world of software development? Yeah, they both did the same thing. In the fast-paced world of software development, efficiency and quality are paramount. In the fast-paced world of software development, efficiency is key. Hmm, very interesting. But never mind that, we'll keep reading the Claude one. Intro automation tools, time savings, consistency. We've got the titles, everything, getting started with automation, step-by-step. -step and then a nice conclusion. All right, so for the end of this round, I would generally say that this was a tie, but there are specific features in either application that I actually really like. I like the fact that Microsoft Copilot actually has links to where they are getting the information from, and I like the way that Claude actually formatted this in a blog post style. But again, I'll let you make your own assumptions. With that being said, let's move on to round two, data analysis and insights. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit on either of these, and we'll see what we get. Let's take a look at Copilot first. Okay, so Copilot took our data set and said, patterns and insights, regional sales performance. West region has the highest sales on a single day. North region shows consistent performance, respectively, sales trends over time. Okay, so it's interesting. It's actually breaking it down into its patterns and insights based on regional sales performance, sales trends over time, comparative regional insights, basically breaking it down into subcategories, which the information is then stored and shown in a way that's easily digestible, even if you don't really understand the data set itself. We have some potential insights here as well, such as high performance in the West, consistent growth in the North, opportunity for improvement in the East. And it asks if I would like to dive deeper into any specific aspect of this analysis. Pretty straightforward, giving exactly what was asked, but let's see how Claude compares. Okay, for the sales analysis data, we've got the actual data set. So let's put it in a table here that we can see uh, based on our sales and our region. Yeah, very interesting, okay. Analysis and patterns, just putting it in pretty much point form. Sales trend, there appears to be an overall upward trend, regional distribution, sales range, regional performance, daily variation, and then potential insights, regional sales disparity, upward sales momentum, daily sales fluctuations. So it's broken it into much more of a document format in that you would typically see in a bigger company looking at these data sets. It's broken it down into three separate sections based on the data set overview, the analysis and patterns, and the potential insights giving very interesting information and insights for all of these. Now, once again, I'll let you make your own decision on which of these you think is better, but personally, I just like the way that Claude looks. Claude actually aligns it in a table format, whereas the data set over here doesn't look particularly nice. And then we have the date, analysis and patterns. Everything's laid out very well. I just like the way that it's laid out 
in the style. Now one thing to be noted here is that given the same prompt, they both generally gave the same thing. Data set overview, data set overview, analysis and patterns, patterns and insights, and potential insights, potential insights. Pretty much identical. So again, at times like this, it kind of comes down to which one you like to look at more. I like the way that Claude laid it out with the table looking actually properly formatted, whereas Copilot just did this and seeing the way that it's set up. Pretty much just giving the exact same thing. So again, I'll let you decide. Now our third prompt here is actually looking at code. How exactly does it do when looking at the code side of things? So we're gonna submit this for both of them and see what we get. It's just got a simple function that says find and fix the bug in the following JavaScript code. So let's see how either of these go and expand it. Ooh, we've actually got an image for Copilot there. The issue with the provided code is that add function is called with only one argument, which requires two. Here's how you fix it. Here's the corrected code. So it gives us a corrected code. We can actually copy that. AI generated code reviewed carefully. In this example, five and three are passed as arguments. Oh, that's interesting. We actually have a couple YouTube tutorials that it's actually linked to, but we've got generally function add AB, return A plus B, console add five, three. Example of both parameters. Let's see how Claude did. Okay, the bug is that the add function's called. Yep, missing parameter, we need to provide both parameters. This will modify A as expected, modifying the function to handle optional parameters. Okay, works with one parameter, B defaults to zero. This will output five as B defaults to zero when not provided. The second approach is much more flexible. Now we also have the ability to go and copy the code here. So this solution maintains the original functionality when two parameters are provided, while also handling cases where only one parameter is provided. Would you like me to explain any more of this in detail? No, I think we're pretty good there. All right, and for our last test here, we're gonna see how well it does when looking at an image. So for both of these, I've put an image of a living room and I've simply said, name every piece of furniture in this room. We're gonna submit that to both of them and see how they do. Are they able to identify every piece of furniture? Will one identify more pieces of furniture? Will one identify different pieces of furniture? Let's see. All right, so for reference, this was the image that I gave it. Now, if we compare that to what Copilot actually said, it says gray sofa with cushions, wooden coffee table with books and decorative items, two orange upholstered armchairs, these ones in the front, wooden sideboard against the wall over there, round wooden dining table, small round side table, and several potted plants. So seven things. How does that actually compare to what Claude said, however? Gray sofa, coffee table, two orange armchairs, floor lamp with cylindrical shape, small side table next to the sofa holding plants, wooden armchair, low wooden bench or console table. Okay, the room also features several decorative elements and plants, but you specifically asked for furniture. The space is a modern nature aesthetic with its mix of materials, colors, and abundant plant life. Now that's interesting. Both chatbots were able to correctly identify pretty much all the pieces of furniture in the room. But each AI chatbot had a different definition of what constitutes furniture. Claude said on one hand that the plants don't really count as furniture. It was mainly focusing on the coffee tables, the chairs, the side tables, those sort of things, while not really considering everything else. Now, Copilot took a much different approach to this. It didn't give me an overview at the end of everything that was in the room and the aesthetic and the vibe and that sort of thing. It simply gave me the list of all the pieces of furniture in the room exactly as requested. Overall, these are both very capable chatbots. Now, for most people using these chatbots, a matter of preference is really gonna come down to testing it out, seeing which one you like more, because these are both very capable chatbots. Copilot and Claude are both different, but for most people, it's really gonna come down to integration. Copilot is obviously involved with a lot more Microsoft products, while Cloud is not. So it all depends on where your chatbot is actually gonna be the most accessible and usable. So for most people, Copilot would be the win here because it's more accessible in Microsoft products because it is a Microsoft product. But for some people, they would find that Claude definitely has a better capability based on just using it in the AI text chatbot. Again, that's up to your discretion. With that being said here, we can't really draw a specific winner because it all comes down to integration. Where is your chatbot more easily accessible? With that being said, I hope that I've given you an overall understanding of what the individual quirks and the user interface are for each individual chatbot and the responses. So as always, thank you so much for watching and my name is Josh Mountain. I'll see you in the next one.